The American government is a fungus that keeps on growing. Here is the government explaining how they want to blow stuff up, hijack jets, kill people, and blame it on foreign enemies. What we're dealing with is a homicide investigation, an open homicide investigation into 3,000 deaths. What we have there is a mystery that hasn't been solved. I think there are thousands of people who know who is responsible for 911, and it's not Osama bin Laden. Who was really behind the attacks? Now, the American-led war on terror is based on the premise that Osama bin Laden planned the 9-11 attacks that killed, as Carol was just saying, almost 3,000 people. But there is a growing movement of scholars, filmmakers, and activists, and members of the public who are looking more closely at the events of that fateful day, and they're claiming there's a, another, more sinister explanation. Now, because of the popularity of these views today, we're going to investigate whether there's anything behind the so-called 9-11 conspiracy theories. This official story about 9-11 is a gigantic conspiracy theory that 19 Arab Muslims, under the guidance of Osama bin Laden, defeated the world's most uh, sophisticated uh, military defense system, and also, in bringing down the World Trade Center, defeated many of the basic laws of physics. So that is the basic conspiracy theory, and what we in the movement are doing is challenging that conspiracy theory. David Ray Griffin is the leading critic of the official story of 9-11. He's a professor of theology at Claremont School of Theology and the author of several controversial books outlining his beliefs, books that have now sold more than 100,000 copies. The students do need to know that the clear majority of the world's Muslims believe that 9-11 was an inside job. They don't accept the official uh, story. The official story, meaning the 9-11 Commission report, a report Barrett says is fraudulent. To me, after having studied the facts for two and a half years, the most probable hypothesis is that this was a new Pearl Harbor, um, an inside job designed by intelligence. Hold on. What do you mean 9-11 is an inside job? Yeah, 9-11 is an inside job. Yeah, there's actually a magazine. Look how thick this is. This is like telephone book material. I mean, it's like how much information do you want? Uh, we have a journal, the Journal of the uh, Journal of 9-11 Truth, uh, Journal of 9-11 Studies, sorry, uh, with, you know, esteemed professors writing journal articles proving one singular point, and that singular point is that 9-11 is an inside job. More and more people are finding out every day. As I said earlier, the, the um, event, um, the realization that just made it completely obvious to me that 9 that 11 was an inside job was that the official explanation that the towers simply fell down due to gravity is completely impossible. The 9-11 Commission didn't even mention Building 7 collapse. Page 172, the U.S. government has not been able to determine the origin of the money used for the 9-11 attacks. Ultimately, the question is of little practical significance. The American authorities have not managed to trace the source of the funding. And then the most amazingly disingenuous statement ultimately is it of little consequence. It is of massive consequence. Doesn't it matter who paid for 9-11? The fact that Pakistani intelligence wired 100K to Mohammed Atta on the 10th of September. And this was reported in a French news agency and the Times of India, and it's never made its way into mainstream American media. That I truly, honestly believe as a human being and a citizen and somebody who studied this for five and a half years, that the, that the tragedy of 9-11 was an inside job and was orchestrated by the White House it was called a false flag operation, a terror fraud. The government has never even tried to prove it's a OBL story. It's a fiction. The 9-11 Commission never tried to prove it. You cannot prove a lie. There, there's your problem. Uh, there's so many things wrong with the 9-11 uh, fiction, the, the myth, the, the uh, official government conspiracy. Um, well, undeniable unifying framework is that the official theory of 9-11 is itself a conspiracy theory. Ladies and gentlemen, the war on terrorism, which is the main justification for waging a war of conquest, which is clearly acknowledged in military and national security documents, that war on terrorism is fabricated. If the government has nothing to hide. Why is it hiding everything? Why is it 
shipping off to China immediately all the forensic evidence except a little bit, thank God, that Professor Jones was able to get a hold of. It's like a fingerprint that the criminal left behind. Uh, and iron oxide and iron sulfide had formed on the surface of the structural steel. Sulfur used with thermite is called thermate, producing even faster results. The film of the collapse of Building 7 shows the failure in 6.6 .6 seconds, free fall speed. Never has a steel frame building fell from fires alone, nor could fires simultaneously collapse all the 24 steel and interior columns and bring the building down in its own footprint. This is what most people don't understand. These towers are so big. If you were to go at the top of these buildings and then throw a rock over, just drop it, it would take about 8.4 seconds to hit down at the bottom. You look at the North Tower seismic data, the structure broke apart in about 8.4 seconds. Yeah. It was, break, it was breaking at free now, fall speed. That is the, that is the uh, trademark of what happens in a uh, controlled, controlled demolition. Demo. For example, the first one is the rate in which the building supposedly dropped violates physics. If you dropped a grand piano from the top floor down in a vacuum, it would take 9.22 seconds. One of the towers, Miss Now says, took 9 seconds, and the other one said it took 10 or 11 seconds. And it wasn't a vacuum that day, I don't believe. <laughs> Now, if you want to talk about the pancake theory, well, if this floor is going to free fall down, this is the time scale, if it's going to free fall down to the 100th floor, the 100th floor can't start moving until the 110th floor gets there to, to get it moving. And if it starts moving at, at that point, it's going to be way past 10 seconds. We uh, pressed early on for for a full-scale investigation and of course one of the issues was while we were doing that um, the evidence from the buildings was being destroyed uh, the nation's we leading newspaper has disgraced itself by its utter failure to come to grips with the obvious and overwhelming evidence that what happened in its own city a few blocks from its own headquarters killing three thousand of its own citizens was a crime committed by the united states government and if these if these people are too stupid or too ignorant to put together two plus two. We have not seen one piece of evidence that links Osama bin Laden and the Taliban directly to the planning stages of September 11th. And when you have no evidence and you charge somebody of conspiracy, that is a conspiracy theory, isn't it? It's so obvious. The reason there are unanswered questions is because the U.S. government will not answer the questions. They know the answers to the questions, and so it's really ridiculous for them to be accusing others of being conspiracy theorists when they won't answer the questions. Now, here's an easy example. The identity of the supposed hijackers. The FBI had distributed a list naming 18 of the 19 hijackers by 10 a.m., on September the 11th. This was before Flight 93 had hit the ground. Within two weeks, the identities of at least six of the hijackers were unclear, as men in Arab countries with the same names and histories, and in some cases the same photographs, were protesting that they were alive. In the time since being fired for questioning the NIST report, I've had a chance to look at this report a little more closely. It was Cheyenne Sunder of NIST who claimed in March 2005, even after the UL floor tests, that pancake, pancaking floors were to blame for those jets of debris. This is in the Popular Mechanics article, right? Pancaking floors. But NIST now openly admits that the floors could not have collapsed and the pancake theory is officially as well as experimentally dead. And Carlisle, of course, has made several, probably billion dollars, and will as a result of this war. In that context, Osama bin Laden went to Afghanistan in 1979, 1980, maybe the early 80s, to fight the Russians, and he was supported by the CIA. January 2001, the Bush administration...
orders the FBI and intelligence agencies to back off investigations involving the bin Laden family, including two of Osama bin Laden's relatives, who were living, guess where, in Falls Church, Virginia, right next to CIA headquarters. When he was already America's most wanted criminal, he reportedly spent two weeks in the American hospital in Dubai, was treated by an American doctor, and visited by the local CIA agent. He studied physics at MIT. I did electrical engineering for about eight years. I've had quite a bit of practical engineering experience. When I first saw the collapses, I was absolutely convinced that they were not spontaneous, but that they were squibs, which represent little puffs of smoke essentially coming out of the buildings initially, uh, which were clearly a sign of controlled demolition. It showed that, that, that the 9-11 Commission was a cover-up. There is documentation of that, that 9-11 was the product of a conspiracy, specifically a conspiracy between the CIA, Pakistani intelligence, and the so-called Al-Qaeda organization, which is really most likely just a product of Pakistani intelligence and CIA.